okay now let's introduce some fixed cost okay just a small complication uh, which is that you know uh, you'll have a discontinuous cost function uh, at zero that's the only thing that uh, you know uh, will be different okay shouldn't be a problem okay it's it should be easy okay so let's do this suppose uh, the demand function is the inverse demand function is max of 12 minus q comma 0 okay and let us say the cost function of firm 1 and 2 is this c1 q1 equals okay let's keep a uh, low fixed cost for the first case okay so let us say fixed cost is one if q1 is positive and zero if q1 is zero okay and similarly c2 q2 is also the same one if q2 is positive and zero if q2 is zero okay so what are we going to do again we are going to proceed in exactly the same way we are going to first solve the game from the perspective of player two which we have already done in the last class so we know how to do that so we are going to first write the best response and then we're going to choose a strategy from the best response okay so what is best response of firm two Tell me what is this? Is that okay? Fine. Uh, you can try this out on your own. Uh, we have already done this, so I'm not doing it again. Is that fine? Okay. Now uh, we can uh, choose a strategy. So it's 12 minus Q1 by 2. So let's say I'm choosing this one. Okay. Okay. Uh, if you want, you can put an equality sign here and then don't put uh, this uh, equality sign here. Uh, but just, you know, whatever you're going to do, just make sure that, uh, you know, you have to analyze the game accordingly. Okay. So this is one possibility. You know, there are two choices for firm two. He can choose uh, either uh, equality sign here or here. So let's say he chooses this. Now, what about player one? What do you think player one will do? Player one will maximize its own profit. Okay. Choosing okay uh max of 12 minus q1 minus q2 comma zero times q1 minus c1 q1 okay uh, subject to the constraint that q2 is this Is that fine? Okay. Now what you can do is, uh, you know, you can just think about it. Like how is from one going to choose? So it looks complicated, but it is not. Okay. Uh, as I've told you several times, you know, don't get, uh, uh, you know, don't get afraid of expressions. You know, this is, uh, you know, I agree there are lots of max involved. Okay. And there is some discontinuity here as well, but uh, you know, we have learned enough techniques to actually handle this. It's just after all a single variable optimization problem. I mean, that's it. Nothing more than that. Okay. So let's uh, let's see. Okay. How is firm one going to make a choice? Uh, well, 
Firm one is is definitely not going to choose more than twelve because uh, because at zero he's going to make a profit of zero. At any output more than or equal to twelve, he's going to make a, a profit of minus one. So clearly zero beats everything after twelve. So zero rules out everything after twelve. So you can just rewrite this maximization problem in this way maximize q1 between 0 and 12 okay i mean doesn't matter you can include the uh, you know or you can exclude it doesn't matter okay and now notice that when q1 is between 0 and 12 then q2 is either 0 in which case this is a positive number and 12 minus q1 minus q2 and if q2 q1 is less than 10 then also this is a positive number because then it is 12 minus q1 minus 12 minus q1 by 2 which is 12 minus q1 by 2 which we have seen in the last problem so no matter what this term will be bigger than this so the max of these two terms will be in this interval just this term so we are going to get 12 minus q1 minus q2 times q1 minus c1 q1 okay and this is uh, subject to q2 equals 12 minus q1 by 2 0 if q1 is less than 10 if q1 is greater than or equal to 10 okay now what is the difference between the this problem and the last problem so notice that there are two differences one is that at zero uh, there is a discontinuity okay and then you know you see at 10 also there is some sort of a difference because the player two's response is changing so what i can do is i can divide this problem into three pieces you know i can say that i'm going to evaluate at zero separately okay and then i'm going to evaluate uh, you know for q1 greater than or equal to 10 Okay, uh, and then I'm going to figure out what happens when Q1 is between uh, 0 and 10. Okay, so when Q1 is 0, uh, my profit is 0. Okay, profit of firm 1 is 0 in this case. Is that fine? Because uh, when Q1 is 0, this term is 0 and this is also 0, so the profit is 0. Uh, so uh, let, we have already evaluated what happens in this case and if if q1 is greater than or equal to 10 the other firm doesn't produce okay if the other firm doesn't produce my prof my profit is 12 minus q1 times q1 uh, minus the fixed cost which is what one right okay so if i uh check this one uh notice that uh if i find the derivative of this i'm going to get uh 12 minus 2q1 okay and when q1 is greater than or equal to 10 this is negative okay so what that means is my profit is falling in q1 so if my profit is falling in q1 because marginal profit is negative right so if i produce more my profit is going to go down so that means you know 10 is the best quantity because 10 is the smallest quantity in this interval uh, so 10 is the best because uh, because uh, the higher i produce uh, the lower profit i make so 10 is the best quantity you know uh, uh, in this interval q1 greater than or equal to 10 okay so what i can do is i can just figure out my profit at 10 okay so profit at 10 will be uh, you can just check that out. Uh, so what is the profit at 10? Uh, so if I produce 10, the other firm produce 0. Uh, if other firm produce 0, then uh, I make uh, 10 minus 12 minus 10, which is 2 times 10, which is 20 minus 1, which is 19. So my profit will be 19. And my best choice in this interval is uh, Q1 star in this case, obviously this is zero. In this case, the best choice is 10, okay? Now in this interval, if I choose in this interval zero to 10, then I'm actually, uh, you know, uh, figuring out what is my best quantity in this interval, 
okay so i'm going to see 12 minus q1 minus q2 times q1 minus 1 because if q1 is bigger than 0 then this is minus 1 uh, and q2 is 12 minus q1 by 2 because when q1 is less than 12 q2 is 12 minus q1 by 2 so what i can do is i can just replace this by 12 minus q1 by 2 so if i subtract it from uh, 12 minus q1 i'm going to get this right so it's the same problem that you solved in the previous problem right so you're going to get q1 equal to 6 right so 6 is your best quantity in this region okay now you have a best quantity in three regions so you can compare which one is the best of these three right by looking at the profits so at six what is your profit at six your profit is uh this is six and this is three so nine so the uh, price is three uh if price is three and the quantity is six it's 18 minus is it 18 just check is it six into three 18 minus one 70 is that clear so what do you think uh the firm will do in this case firm one will do produce 10 units very good you can see how the equilibrium has changed okay so q1 is 10 okay and just by including fixed cost you know you can see that how equilibrium has changed uh q2 is uh 12 minus q1 by 2 if q1 is less than 10 and zero if q1 is greater than or equal to 10. okay so this is the equilibrium uh sub game perfect equilibrium okay is that fine? This is a sub game perfect equilibrium. Remember earlier it was 6, 3. Now it is uh, 10. So earlier it was uh, sub game perfect equilibrium. Outcome was 6, 3. Now it is 10, 0. Okay. Now, uh, now can you tell me what is the monopoly uh, monopoly output you know if you if you let's say there is only one firm then what is the monopoly output in this particular problem exactly it is six okay now notice that here in this situation only one firm end up operating right only one firm is operating do you agree because the other firm you know choose to produce zero right that's the outcome but still it is not producing the monopoly output because fixed costs are not so high okay so it turns out so this is let's say fixed cost it turns out that you know we have seen that at zero at zero both firms were operating first firm was producing six second firm was producing three when fixed cost is one then only one firm is operating but it is producing a output 10 okay it is not producing the monopoly output okay so there is some cutoff fixed cost here some cutoff okay you can say that this is uh, uh you know this situation you can call it accommodation this uh you know you can call it uh uh entry deterrence okay so you so accommodation this is accommodation you know you accommodate okay this is where you try and deter entry entry deterrence okay so at one you try and deter entry by producing more than the monopoly output you know you produce 10 
you know in order to avoid the other firm to enter in the industry and uh, you know uh, share profit with you so so it turns out that you know there is some cut off fixed cost below which uh, there is entry accommodation and then above which there is entry deterrence okay and then there is some fixed cost cut off here you know which you can call that uh, you know beyond which uh, you will find natural monopoly okay so now your homework is to figure out these cutoffs okay so let's call this uh, first cutoff and this is the second cutoff okay so it turns out that there is another cutoff beyond which if you produce the mon monopoly output the other firm will say that okay i'm 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 out so that is a situation which we call as natural monopoly is that okay so if i increase the fixed cost here you know the effort that firm one has to do to keep the other firm out is it has to produce 10 units uh, but if i increase the fixed cost that effort goes down you know it has doesn't have to produce 10 units it can do that with a with a smaller level of output okay uh, so it will turn out that you know if fixed if fixed cost is going to keep going up uh, then uh, at some stage uh, uh, you know if it produces the monopoly output the other firm will choose to stay out okay so you have to figure out what these cutoffs are okay so i would recommend that you know you solve the same problem again for uh, you know uh, two or three fixed costs uh, to get an idea you know let's say when fixed cost is uh, 9 what happens when fixed cost is let's say 16 what happens you know or 20 uh, you know what happens you know you might want to redo this game you know resolve this entire game uh, again and again for two or three fixed costs and that's going to give you an idea you know what's going on and then you'll be able to find these cutoffs you know it's not very difficult it's very simple actually okay so just do that and uh, take that as an exercise is that clear to everyone okay 